researchers travel and our journey starts in Kinshasa, the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, the immediate neighborhood of the mystery Congo River. After taking off from a little tarmac in the middle of the town, we cross over the Congo River, look down at some small villages and leave quickly the densely populated area around the capital. Soon we fly over closed canopy forest and after two hours we reach our destination. If the weather is good and the pilot is in good mood, he will circle over our forest camp, Louis Cotal, before touching down at the Epope airstrip in the middle of a savanna patch. Here we meet students and researchers who just came out of the forest and are on the way back to Kinshasa and later to Europe. We exchange some news before taking off the hike 25 kilometers from Epope to the research camp. We cross savanna patches, some elephant bath, some clearings before we arrive at Lokoro River, where we jump into a dugout canoe, cross over, and eventually arrive in Louis Cotal camp site. We remove the wet clothes and luggage before moving into tents under palm leaf roofs and then meet other members of the team. There's always between five and 10 foreign researchers, students, volunteers doing the research at the same time together with local assistants. And people live here for several months, though they are not doing only the research. They all have fun and yeah, communicate with each other. And it's always nice and funny because people come from different nationalities. And so it's a real nice getting together uh, we are working together with uh, local assistants and, of course, have a service crew. Here is the fisherman bringing back fish from the Lokoro River that feeds the researchers and the local assistants. And that replaces the not the nice and tasty corned beef that you would get in Kinshasa. Usually we start early in the morning to meet the apes at the nest site before they start their journey through the forest in the morning. One of the first things you have to do is to check who is present. Bonobos have different faces and different personalities, just as humans have. And you tick off whom you see, what males, what females, whether the infants are present or not. The research topics that we are focusing right now are all very specifically tailored to Bonobos. And this is not surprising because bonobos are interesting because they are very different from their sister species, chimpanzees, and to a certain degree also from human beings. And taking the phylogenetic assumption that all three of us, the two plant species and humans, shared a common ancestor. What we can assume, therefore, is that part of the bonobo behavior is the behavior that the common ancestor showed. And by finding out to what degree and where bonobos and chimpanzees and humans are similar, this is one way to reconstruct the behavioral ecology of the common ancestor of all three species. One particularly interesting aspect in bonobo social ecology is the apparent lack of physical aggression in male bonobos and a system that one could perhaps describe as co-dominance between males and females. This is drastically different from chimpanzees and it also is different from many human populations where males clearly dominate females. And in bonobos this is not the case. Though the very interesting question is, is this peacefulness in male bonobos enforced by cooperative females who just suppress male aggression by cooperating against males or are male bonobos per se less or non-aggressive? And to answer this question, we collect data from young male bonobos to see if they experience something like puberty in the sense that there is an increase, a surge in testosterone as we know 
it happens in humans and in chimpanzees, or if male bonobos are really without any female enforcement less aggressive. This is one of the key issues. Another interesting topic of our current research is the behavior in the context of hunting. Bonobos uh, like to eat fruit, but on top of this they hunt forest antelopes and other monkeys. And one project aims on identifying what is the prey for bonobos in terms of the species, the size, the sex and so on. And what we see here is Andrew Fowler just taking measurements and weights of the remains from a hunt on a forest antelope. That's just the daily routine data and the way data are obtained in the campsite. Having followed bonobos for almost 10 years, we have learned a lot about their natural history and their social biology. We made exciting observations and got a deeper insight into the behavior of this elusive species. And still, uh, I'm convinced that there is so much more to learn about the behavior and that the next years will bring us an equal amount of exciting news that eventually will tell us so much more about our own history and our own species.